to what the Australian chairman said um, about you know, there basically being 10 to 20 competitive nations around the world in cricket rather than at the moment what we've got maybe seven or eight like very competitive nations who you know you can say are you know on any given day can win against each other basically um and yeah i don't i just think cricket has got a long way to go because unlike other sports where it is globally recognized and you you see it in being competed uh, across 50 different nations in cricket we are only limited to really if you think about like the test championship you're eight eight teams or whatever it is so it's just really not good enough to be honest with you and the only way that cricket's going to grow globally and if they want to really push forward that olympic idea the only way you're going to do that and actually generate interest from it is by making sure you do the groundwork beforehand and you make sure that you include include teams like ireland hong kong whoever it might be usa even um scotland Amman. Netherlands, yeah, all these sides, right? And then also, what will happen is Nepal, all these teams will, if you start playing T20s, ODIs, even test matches, and people are going to be saying, what? Test matches? Yeah, because the only way that you're going to get these nations excited about it is by getting them to play against the bigger nations. I'm not saying throw them into a test match straight away with, um, you know, Australia or Pakistan or India or England. I'm not saying that. I'm saying maybe start with T20s getting them playing those against everyone, that everyone has to play a certain number of games against whatever associate nations per year. Then you bump it up to ODIs once they get more comfortable. Then once they get more comfortable on that, then you bump it up to test cricket. And then you know what will happen? The whole world will be a lot better for it in terms of a cricketing nation because you won't just have people cheering for one team. You'll have people cheering for two, three teams. You'll have people discussing it, not just with, people who are interested in seven or eight countries, but you'll be, you'll be able to discuss cricket with people who are interested who, from 20, 30 countries, you know, 10 to even, as he said, 10 to 20 countries. And you, 20 countries is ideal because you don't want to be having the same teams playing the same series constantly. And it does get boring. And I don't want to be really controversial here, but the Ashes, I know it's seen as being regarded as, as like the one of the pinnacles of Test cricket, but to me as a neutral who really doesn't support either team, I don't see, like, it's every two years. And I find I, it ends up getting a bit boring to me in, in the sense that I don't want to keep on seeing the same team playing the same team every time, basically. And they play each other all the time, Australia and England. Same with India. India play Australia and England all the time. Even with Pakistan and stuff and other teams, they, they play each other constantly and you see the same matchups constantly. So it'd be nice to see other teams, other countries get introduced I'm not saying get rid of the Ashes, get rid of these teams, but what I'm saying is is that you need to have a format where, for example, India are not playing Australia in four tests and then Sri Lanka are only playing South Korea in two tests or Pakistan are only playing New Zealand in two tests. That that's, doesn't make any sense to me. You either have to conform and say we're going to play three tests across the board series. If you want to do five tests, then you've got to say we're going to play five tests across the series and then you've got to make sure that you're playing everyone's being able to play against the top teams equally because even at the moment it's cliquey and there's only seven teams. So imagine what's going to happen when it grows. It, they'll probably have a system in place where there's three tiers of test championship. So I just think if we're going to do it, we're going to do it properly rather than just doing it for the sake of it so that certain countries can show off their own talents and players because I think we all need, to, all the cricket boards need to be in it together to say, we want to make cricket grow and let's, you know, make sure that cricket doesn't die because that's what will end up happening to some degree. You'll lose fans because all you'll have is test cricket is already supposedly dying, although we've seen it because we're big cricket fans. But as a casual fan, are they going to watch test cricket at the moment? Probably not. They're going to go after work and watch a T20 game. So if you want to get people interested, you've got to have more countries involved and actually help them out as well. And that's the only way to do it. Sorry, I've ranted on a little bit, but I'm I'm really passionate about this, and I, I want cricket to grow globally, not just within seven eight countries. But the issue is, though, I know I think you made some really good points there. But the issue is, but where are these balls they've got to find the time, especially when there's lots of franchise cricket going on? Yeah, I agree. I agree. It's difficult, and 
maybe it starts from at home where you have at the moment for example as you said um it's difficult but i think the the first thing that needs to be put in place is as you said like sri lanka are not playing are sri lanka having was it two tests against england yeah okay so they're having two tests against england but then australia have five tests against england so that what if you think about it you're getting exposed to the top teams less than the other top teams. So what's happening at the moment is prior to what cricket used to be, where everyone used to play everyone the pretty much the same amount of times. Now what you've got is really three nations, Australia, England and India, playing each other more times than they'll play any other nation. And so what they're doing is they're trying to improve each other, which is what's happening. And the other nations like Sri Lanka, like Pakistan, like even New Zealand to a degree, New Zealand are doing really well considering they're not having West Indies even. If you want West Indies test cricket to improve, you've got to be playing them, making sure that they can play against all the top nations the same amount as any other top nation. That's my point, I think. And that is possible because at the moment, what's happening is it's all very cliquey and cricket boards have certain agreements with other cricket boards and they're all pally-pally, but they don't want to do it with anyone else. Uh, And that's my issue that I have at the moment with it because there's no one central governing body. The ICC doesn't have control over scheduling. It's all to do with the cricket boards agreeing with other cricket boards and the ICC releases it. Um, so I just think if it start, if you start from there, then you've got something in place where it's kind of a format each year where you know, okay, this is what's going to be happening rather than changing every year in terms of we're going to have four tests or the next year we'll only have two tests against them because we don't rate them anymore. And, and if you do that, then overall cricket will be better. And then going forward from there, as you said, with franchise cricket, I don't know how much time you have in between, but we've got to make time for it. And, and I, I'm, this is there's what I mean about importance. Sorry? There's no time for some. But there's time for T20 games. Of course there will be yeah, to start but, off with. Yeah. But, but the thing is that you've got to... The balls are balanced in between. Do we grow T20? Do you grow ODI? Do you grow tests? Maybe you talk to Sri Lanka and Pakistan. Yeah fans, boards, they're probably more focused on ODI cricket, T20 and ODI cricket at the moment. Like I went to a test match in Sri Lanka and there was no one in the ground. Yeah, but Venu, I don't, I don't agree ODI with that. Though. It was ODI match when there's most, I just think there is, I, I think you made the right point. I think it's right. I think it's, it's, it works. Your, your thing works with the eight tests or eight or 10 test play nations. Yeah. But how do you globally, how do you get Canada involved? How do you get Nepal involved? How do you yeah. get the, those other teams involved. So are you saying they've got to play test matches as well with England? So I'm saying to start off with, you start with T20s. And you can fit that in because that's possible. And then to be honest with you, what my, my point is, is that actually when you get people like Canada and Nepal, all these other teams coming in and playing T20 against everyone else, then cricket in those countries, like the interest, one, raises. And, and other countries like UK, Pakistan, whatever, then you think, oh, I'll hold on. Canada and Nepal, they're not too bad, actually. They can actually play a little bit, and you recognise players, etc. Then, these franchises, etc., as well, they will, be, they will be placed under less importance. And I'll tell you why. Because at the moment, cricket fans are looking... What are they looking for? They're looking to see as much cricket as they can, right? That's why yeah. franchise cricket is thriving. But, it, but the problem... What the ICC have missed is that with the IPL the BBBL, BBL, all these other franchises, the reason why they've risen is because there is time in schedules at the moment to do it. But if you want to make sure that what they should have done is before they even started doing the franchise, they've heard about franchise cricket, they should have said, actually, we're going to have all these T20s against Canada, against Nepal, etc. We're going to mix them in with the, with the big boys, see how they go. And then actually you have a schedule where people are able to watch cricket and a lot more cricket. Yeah, that, yeah, that's my point, I think. And then actually people are not being put, are not turning their attention to the franchise cricket. I'm not saying they shouldn't, but as I've said, that's not the pinnacle of the sport. And the issue is that some people are thinking that's the pinnacle of the sport, and it's not. Um, so people literally are worshipping IPL teams or PSL teams or LPL teams, and that's their, like, they care more about that than they care about their own country. But, you know, you can't win it's a funny. World Cup in a franchise. It's funny, like, you, you'll ask Liverpool fans or Chelsea fans in football, like if if you ask them, would you rather England win the World Cup or your team win the Premier League or Champions League? They'd probably go for their club, wouldn't you say? And I think cricket's becoming going to become like that. 
I, I, I disagree, actually. As a Chelsea fan, I'd rather England won the World Cup than we won the Champions League. I don't really care that much about that, to be honest with you. Um, I think... But as... there'll be some fans that will... There, there, there will be. I agree with you. There are some. But I think the issue with that is, even in football, it's cliquey. But the one thing about football is, Vanny, though, is that um, you do have internationals and people... It doesn't matter whether you're from Liverpool, you're from Manchester. People will sit together and as soon as you, the World Cup's on, the whole nation will watch it. And people that don't even care about football will still watch it. Well, that's that's my point. But that, no, but that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. So, but that's we need to get cricket in that position. At the moment, there's people that are not watching the Premier League or any type of football. But as soon as the World Cup's on, they'll watch it. Do you think that's the same with cricket? Do you think when the World Cup's on, do you think a whole nation's watching it? Or do you think there's some people that actually they'll watch the IPL and then if India go out, they won't even bother watching it anymore. Or similar to PSL, they might watch the PSL, but as soon as Pakistan goes out the World Cup, oh, we don't care anymore. That's my point. Whereas as someone who might watch it as a casual watching the World Cup, you keep up to date with it. Yeah, I get your point. But I think it's going to be difficult considering... It is difficult, yeah. I agree. Because cricket has got... Well, football's only one format where it's 90 minutes. Cricket, obviously, has got extra time constraints, five-day test matches, plus ODI, yeah. plus money, plus all yeah. just franchise cricket. I think you made a really good point. I think I think the cricket board's missed an opportunity to grow the sport globally. Instead, yeah. they're focused on growing their franchises. And I think the... the I think the owner should have been on growing the sport globally and letting the likes of Nepal, Canada, uh, Ireland really develop their cricket um, um, cricket skills. So, yeah, I think that's it's a, it's a interesting... Like, like it was good to see, for example, Ireland have two tests against England, right? Like, yeah. Like, I was happy that they got that because why not? Like, you know, they, why can't they do it? And the only way... If the issue is that people just say, oh, well, you know, just put them in. But the issue is that because they haven't had exposure to... Um, test cricket or even the even lesser teams like the Nepal's etc in T20s and ODIs against these top top teams they'll never be able to improve to that level the only way you can do that is by exposing them that's and that's why I feel quite passionate about it because I just think as as a cricket fan and I, and I so, and I love other sports like football like boxing like tennis but all these sports are global sports they're not just stuck to seven eight countries and you might have someone, you might have an anomaly where someone from Russia might like cricket, but there's not that many people. It's really, you have cricket fans that are concentrated within the subcontinent, England, Australia, New Zealand, West Indies, the Caribbean, uh, and that's pretty much it, right? Like, where else do you really have cricket? Are you going to go to South America or any, a whole continent of America who's, like, as you said, Canada might play it, but hardly anyone, a lot of people won't even know Canada even have a cricket team. Um, so that, that's what that's what I think is just it's a little bit for me it just doesn't sit right with me and it shows a complete lack of um, kind of thinking and, and innovation to think how can we grow the sport in all countries rather than just saying what they're doing at the moment is they're thinking how can we grow the sport globally but sticking with these countries we have rather than saying how can we grow the sport globally so that everyone in every country wants to play cricket and that's what they're doing in other sports but they're not doing it in cricket yeah I agree yeah I, I think I mean historically I think test match cricket was based on the British Empire and um, that's why you know you've got you know the Indian subcontinent playing Australia New Zealand and the West Indies playing so I think that's historically I think that's why it was popular in these countries but I think I think test match cricket is really hard to spread globally, but I think a format like T20 can be easily spread globally. So hopefully that's something they can look at and look at improving because T20 has really come about the last 10, yeah. 10, 15, 10 years. So I think that's a format they can really spread all around the world. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think test match cricket, as you said, is very tough because it's very uh, unique. And I think, even some people that will follow cricket, they might not watch full test days even because they just don't have the attention for it. And, and let's be honest, the people's attention spans nowadays are not as uh, large as they used to be. So people want quick stuff and that's why T20 has come into its own. Um, but yeah, I agree with you. You have to first grow it in T20s. Um, and then, yeah, if you can get... Even if they can add two, three nations to the Test Championship roster, it's a win-win for me. I just think I agree. 
as long as they can just do that. And and maybe, as I said, maybe when I said about annual schedules being uniform, maybe you have a three-year kind of schedule because obviously no one can play everyone every single year, but you do it so that you have a three-year schedule, whatever it is, so that everyone still manages to play everyone within a three-year period or two-year period. And actually you're playing everyone the same amount of time. That's the other thing that I think is really important because the issue is at the moment is that, you, as I said, I think um, even what will happen at the moment is that if it carries on how it is, teams like the West Indies, even Sri Lanka, even Pakistan, even like, you know, whoever else, Bangladesh, for example, yeah, they, they've improved or they, they were great in the past, but they will fall by the wayside when they're not giving as much exposure as uh, the top teams playing against each other. And I think we've got to be careful about that because um, you don't want to be in a situation where you really only have three to five teams who are actually very competitive or, or actually when they play against anyone else outside that top five or top three, um, they, they completely outmatch them. You don't, you don't want that, do you, in cricket? No, you don't. I, I think you made a good point. I think England, Australia, India will always be strong. And I do think like like West Indies, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, even New Zealand have, have had strong strong periods in their cricketing histories, but they haven't been able to maintain it. Um, so I think, yeah, but having... You know, you know, even India, though, to a degree, it's only recently they became very strong because back in the day they weren't. It was only really Australia and England that were very strong because of the Ashes, basically, because they had that agreement. But now India, in the last probably, I don't know, what, 20, 20, maybe 20 years, yeah. have come more into their own uh, because of it. So I just think that but they've definitely now, they're I one still, of them, aren't they? I still think the Ashes still has to be five five, five test matches, personally. But then, no, that, well, I understand what you're saying, really, because of the tradition. Because you're a yeah, traditionalist, yeah. right? I agree with you. But then that's fine. So if you want to do that, then fine. So, for example, training and play five tests against each other, but that's every two years, right? Yeah, home and away. Yeah. So every four years and at home. Yeah. So it, so yeah, so, so like... every so every two years. So in a two year space, you play five tests between Australia and England. That's what they do, right? Fine. So then you do that. Then, for example, England, if they play Sri Lanka, they might not play a five test series, but they'll play three tests one year and then two tests the next year. That's how you do it. And then that's how you make sure that it's fair. You know, I'm not saying yeah. that every test series has to be five tests. I'm not saying that. I'm just yeah. saying that the cumulative amount of tests that everyone plays against each other should be the same. And if you want to kick, stick it to five tests, as you said, because traditionally that's what the Ashes is, then fine. But there's got to be that because I've looked through schedules for different countries and I know how much, like even as a Pakistan fan, how much cricket we play against the top nations and how much other nations do it. And I can see that it's, it's completely out of whack. Yeah, it's true. I think there needs to be more uniformity in the schedule and it has to be fair for everyone. And also, they need to think about growing the sport globally because it's a sport that deserves to be, you know, every country deserves to play. And I'm sure every country has their own team, but they, they need to be, they need to have a chance to really expand you know, the great game that cricket is. So, yeah, so I think that's, I think that we've come to the conclusion there, haven't we, Fazan? Yeah, sorry for ranting on a little bit. I'm just, as you can probably oh, tell, I'm very, very passionate about this. This is one thing in cricket, actually, um, everything, but I just feel very passionately about. And as someone who has coached kids and stuff as well, um, I just think, and I've coached kids from loads of different backgrounds, not just who are from the UK, who might have come from other countries, etc. And, and they are countries that, like Portugal, Spain, etc. But they want to learn the game of cricket. And I think the issue is, uh, as you said, like we, it needs to be growing globally and. I just think um, if we want to make sure that the sport thrives long term, you just got to do that. And hopefully it does. And fingers crossed, because I think more people are pushing it. Sachin Tendulkar, for example, he said it. He said, I think the World Cup, what did he say? He said the World Cup should, shouldn't be um, cut down. Because I think we talked about this very briefly. He said it should yeah, include the Associate yeah. Nations. Uh, yeah. and, and that's even that is a, a step in the right direction. But even things like World Cup, why can't it be some like the football World Cup where it's a knockout yeah. tournament, like 32, 64, or even like 32 teams? Why not? Well, I think for the T20s, it could be, right? You, know, you could do that because you can play back-to-back -back days um, at, yeah. or, or every other day. Like for sure, you can do that. So I agree with you. For the T20 th tournament, it definitely should be. I think what the point we made earlier, I think 10 years ago, growing Test cricket or 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 
growing test cricket globally would have been a hard ask. Whereas now, with T20 cricket and popularity that's brought, uh, I think that's a format that you can you can spread globally. And it and you know what, it's three hours for a game. Yeah, why not? Yeah, hundred percent agree. Cool. Um, if you do like what you've watched, viewers, please do um, subscribe to Fizan's Quality Shot channel where you can also see more good things cricket and also tennis and um, boxing as well. Fizan does videos on those. And um, thank you for tuning into Venice Weekly Cricket Catch Up. Hopefully, we'll see you all next week. So, bye for now. <laughs>